Let's cast your mind back to January the 13th, 2007, your debut for the club. What do you remember of that day? I don't know, it seems quite a long time ago now, but um, I, th I remember coming on as a substitute, I think it was, and then, to be honest, after that, not really too much. I remember being pretty nervous before it, because it was at Ninian Park and it was all enclosed and the, the fans were on top of you, so it was a pretty daunting experience for, for me, but yeah, it, it went okay, I think. Talking about <coughs> things going well, should we have a look at some of the things which perhaps went better than expected, your best memories? Yeah, let's or go. Or what we it. think of your best memories. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> And what a sensational opening for City with a superb piece of work from Peter Whittingham after nine minutes. Talk us through that goal. Yeah, it was a great feeling. No one really gave us much of a chance against Middlesbrough. It was always going to be a tough game. But we got off to a great start and then obviously Rog got, got the header in as well. And it was, it, was, it was pretty surreal at the time. The fans went crazy and it, it, was, it was a great day. And getting to the final that season, what were your thoughts? What do you remember from that experience? It was a weird experience. It was all kind of a blur. It, was, it all seemed to just knit into one the day as a whole. It doesn't really hit you until after the game, if you understand me, because you don't really, really realise how many people are watching and you've watched it as a kid. And it was just it was an unbelievable day. Obviously, the result could have gone better, but to, to say you got in an FA Cup final is pretty huge. What about the memories that you guys as a team have, have gained off the field? Well, I suppose fans as a whole only really see that when you go out on the pitch. I mean, I think we, we had to do a song and, and, and things. It was... Hang on, you sang? Well, I kind of mimed. I didn't really... There was quite a few people around. I think we had Percy and, and, people, and Trevor Sinclair and people like that that just seemed to just shout more than anything else. So. And you got Tomo as well, the great character, and he was quite good on the guitar for some unknown reason. What about notes there? Yeah, and Norris with his danger rouse out of it and, and all that. It's, 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 it's memories that you, you just look back on and it's just great to be a part of. So moving on now to the 2009-2010 season, you were top goal scorer. How did that season change your game? The season as a whole, I played wide left and I wasn't really forced to track back all that much. It was a case of getting in the box. We had Berkey on, the, on wide right, who seemed to get a lot of crosses in a game. And then we had Jay and Chops up front that seemed to dive quite a lot. So we managed to get a few penalties and the goals just seemed to just keep coming, to be honest. It was there are either tap-ins or, or penalties and goals which I probably don't score enough of nowadays. But at the time, the, the ball was falling for me. From 2010 to 2011, you adopted more of a deeper midfield role. How do you feel in terms of your comfort zone with that role change? The game changed a lot. I think remember Dave Jones saying to me that he's going to try and get me on the ball more. It was a case of trying to get me involved in the game more and trying to start play off from ourselves, albeit for maybe a deeper position that I maybe would have liked, but I felt like it would help the team as a whole. And I felt like it did. It, it, we, got, we got the ball forward better and quicker. And you can, you can see from the movement we had up front and, and the wingers and everything, that, that team really was, was, was pretty awesome. Well, talk about your set pieces anyway. You're obviously used to it now, but what's the pressure like when it comes to a corner or a penalty or a free kick just outside the box? I used to fall straight to you with high expectations most of the time. What do you think at that moment in time when you step up to take it? Um, the corners can be different. The corners is it's a case of once you get out there, all the fans are expecting quite a lot. They're expecting good delivery and they're expecting someone on the end of it. So it, it can be pretty daunting at a stage. But all you're really really looking to do as a player is hit areas from corners. Luckily for me, over the years we've had a lot of players that attack the ball really well. It's, I mean, even Hoods lately and, and Moza now and Turns. It's it's a case of they do want to they do want to attack the ball and they, and they want to score goals, which can only only benefit really me as a set piece taker. So what's going through your mind is running up to take a penalty or that penalty? <laughs> I'm just hoping the keeper dives the other way. To be honest, it's not really all much else I can do. No, you, you're looking to hit side nettings. That's all you really can do as a penalty taker. And then as soon as your head goes down, it's, it's you look up and then hope he's dived the wrong way, and thankfully it goes in. So for obvious reasons, would it be fair to assume that your favourite season with the club would have been 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, I said as soon as I signed for the club that I wanted to get the club into the Premiership. I felt like I had a helping hand in that that season, and, and we got and we got to the Premiership in the end. And it was um, that the final day when we were actually promoted was was something me personally been waiting for for so long. And it was it was it was a really great great day. And what was your favourite moment from that season? Uh, probably the Wolves hat trick. And, I think it was Nooney's debut. He was he was brilliant that day. He was taking everyone on. I think he won the penalty, and um, he, he was really good that day. And that's when we thought well, maybe we've got a chance here. Here goes Whittingham. And then last season you extended your deal with the club last summer. What are your hopes and expectations now? both as yourself as an individual and obviously with the club in general? Just to get back up to the Premiership, I think we all tasted what, what that was. We all, knew, we all knew what a massive season it was going to be in the Premiership, but as you say, the, the days when you, when you go and beat Man City at home and you, and you see the fans' reaction and you realise maybe the golf isn't all what you thought it was, and just to have days like that again would, would, would be brilliant. And then. A, a good cup run again would be. I mean, I've reached the Carling Cup final and, and the FA Cup final, and you know what a, what a great experience that is. So a, a cup run as well would be. I don't know, maybe a little bit too greedy, but yeah, that as well. It's been eight years and counting. Did it, has it felt like eight years? No, not really. I mean, just speaking about the FA Cup final now, and you realise how long ago it was. It's you yourself. It all kind of rolls into one, and you don't really you don't really see it as seasons. It's sort of just you remember games. And to remember that FA Cup final is something that I'll obviously look back on for, for years to come. And then let's talk about the Carling Cup final and all those memories playing against the likes of Steven Gerrard. I think we didn't get off to the best of starts. I think Glenn Johnson ran through from his halfway line and seemed to hit the bar. And then we all had a little look around ourselves and thought, this is big. <laughs> we actually really need to start up in our game or, or we, could, we could get battered here. So it was as simple as that. We knew what, what a good team Liverpool were. But after that, I thought we, we controlled the game well. We got the goal through, through Mace, and I felt we, we kind of looked comfortable for a period. It was always going to be a tough game. They were always going to have their chances. They are a really good team, and it was going to be a case we had to ride our luck a little bit. And then when Turns gets the goal in extra time, you think, could this be it? Could this be, could this be us, us winning the, the Carling Cup final? But it didn't happen. Penalties is, is luck of the draw. It's, it's a lottery, really. But... To take Liverpool two penalties in the Carling Cup final is, is pretty huge. How about your favourite teammate, the time you've been here? Who would it be? Steve McPhail, I think. I thought the way he played football was, for me personally, because I've kind of the, the same sort of player. I mean, you like to be like to have time on the ball. And Macca, whenever he had it, he seemed like he had so much time. It was... Um, he seemed to have players around him, but it didn't really fluster him. It didn't really make a difference to what he was going to do. And I, I, for me personally, I thought he was brilliant. Mr. the calm and collected. <laughs> yeah, himself. definitely he was. You've got a lot to choose from, but which one, if you had to pick, which would be your favourite or your best goal? My favourite personally is, is the Leicester goal, the, the free kick. I think the, um, just the fans' reaction and, and the stage of the game at the time. And it was a semi-final of the playoffs. It was it was a huge goal and and one that that really was 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 huge for us as a team. We knew we still had to go back to our place and, and get something from it, but it was it, it put us in a really good um, good position. Right, so now is not a time to be super modest. Stop playing things down. How did this feel? This goal and then to get national recognition for it. I didn't really think too much of the goal at the time. I kind of remember it obviously hitting the ball. I think the boy came across me and I thought maybe he was going to kick me, but I managed to get the shot off and it's gone in and obviously happy I got the goal, but didn't really realise at the time what a big goal it was and, and to get goal of the year was, was, was amazing. I mean, I remember going to the dinner at the night and you kind of do this vote thing at the night, so everyone votes at the time. And I managed to go around every table and just tell them to vote, vote for me, so it was lucky enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when you watch them back then, would you think, oh, hang on, hang on a minute, yeah. That's, that's decent. I don't know to that extent. I just think that's a, that's a good strike or I was happy that went in. And as I say, state of the game is huge. If it's nil-nil and then you go and score a goal. You just look at... It's, I think it's more you look at other people's reactions, like the players' reactions and the fans' reactions. And it's it, obviously it makes you happy, yeah. Well, you do what you want. You're Peter Whittingham. How does it feel to hear the crowd <laughs> chanting that? Do you like that one? 
I do actually really like the channel. I don't know where it started from or where it stemmed from, but I'd like to um, like to thank the, whoever that started it. I mean, I, I love it, and to hear that many fans sing your name and, and think that much of you, it's it's, it's brilliant.